Hey, it's Joel. We're here at the Bay Area Maker Faire, and a lot of people always ask me, is there still 3D printing at Maker Faire? Do you still see 3D printing companies and enthusiasts here showing off all the cool stuff? And I'm here to tell you, it's true. We took a trip down the 3D printing area, and we're going to show you some of the cool stuff we saw right here at Maker Faire. I'm Joel. This is 3D Printing Nerd. We're here at the Snapmaker booth, and I'm here with Rady, and they have the Snapmaker 2 at yes. Maker Faire. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, um, actually we have the model there, so um, do we need to move that? And this is the medium model, is that right? Yes, medium model. So you've got three different sizes of Snapmaker 2s that are available, a smaller yes. one, a medium one, and then a big one. Yes, an uh, even bigger one. I saw it was, uh, it was 320 by 320 by 350. Yes. And it's able to do 3D printing, yes. but laser cutting and CNC milling, right? Yes, yes. All wow. Three. This was go, cut that. by the uh, Snapmaker 2 uh, laser. I see. So each of these, uh, it, it was just a sheet of wood. Yes. And, and then, it, then it cut layer and layer, and then we stick them together. It looks great. So talk a little bit about Snapmaker 2 and how fast you guys achieved your success. Because if I read that right, uh -huh, $2 million yes. after an hour on Kickstarter, that's pretty unheard of. Yes, that's kind of crazy. So um, we launched that on May 7th. OK. And uh, it's uh, 7, 7 a.m. Uh, PT. Yes, and then it, it was like uh, within one minute we we reached the goal. One minute. Yeah, within one minute. That's and crazy. Then, and then we uh, broke the record in seven minutes. So called that uh, we are the fastest uh, project to reach one million. And then we broke the record uh, in one hour to break the two million record. And that's all just Snapmaker too. Everybody wanting to get their hands on it, right? Yes. When will people get this in their hands? What's the schedule? Um, so the first batch will be shipped in November this year. November, just in time for Christmas? Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. And can people still get in on the Kickstarter? Can they still pre-order? Yes, of course. So um, the campaign will end on June 6th. So before that, uh, everybody can still back us on Kickstarter. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Well, shoot, I love this booth. I love the smell of the... Uh, of the wood, you've got the laser cut wood here. It smells yes. like making, it smells like proper projects. Oh, I see, this is, uh, is the laser going right now? Uh, it's just ended, I think. But this is an enclosure, obviously. So with yes. laser safety, I remember at CES, you yes. had the laser kind of out in the open. Yes. But you're now, you now have an enclosure for this. Is this enclosure available for the larger? Yes, actually we bring one prototype. It's a prototype enclosure. That's hidden away. Well, cool. I like the booth. I like what you've done. I like that you're a little bit more safe now than you were at CES. Yes. And then uh, I wish you nothing but the best of luck. Happy Maker Faire. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a nice day, too. Thank you. We're here at the Zach's booth at Maker Faire. And talk a little bit about Zach's and what's going on. Because I saw you at CES, I think it was two years ago. Yes. And you've done a lot since then. Yes. Uh, we have a new models. Uh, we call Z series. Z series, yeah. is that right? This one is Z1 and this one is Z1 Plus. The specs are same, but the difference is just size. Uh, it oh. can print 20 by 20 by 20 centimeter, and it can print 30 by 30 by 30 centimeters. Okay. The maximum build volume. The all printers are included and closed and temperature controlled build area, so we can get a perfect result with the all materials, even in industrial materials, which is like ABS, ASA, or some nylon materials. Okay, so peak and all are still out of the question, uh, right? Peak is a really high temperature yeah. printing, so we have an all metal uh, hot end system right now. It is not included in PTFA tube, but it can warm up maximum 320 degrees. Okay. So peak is, I think we cannot print it okay. peak with peak. I like how these have incredibly large ball screws. Yeah. So the, the precise and reliability is really important for us. Yeah. So that's why we, we, we start to design uh, when this Z1 Plus. Yeah. So we, we want to get extremely reliable and extremely workhorse uh, 3D printers. Yeah. So that's why we really we make really hard, uh, beautiful mechanics. Well, the reason I was talking about those, it feels like the, the Z system is like the Raze 3D, where it has yes. the giant ball screw, and then at the top and, and how it looks, it's almost like an Ultimaker and a Raze 3D kind of came together. Yes. So the quality that these machines can produce is, this was printed, right? Yeah, this is 200 micron printing. Uh, it takes, I think, six days without any non-stopping. 
So, and no support. No support, yeah. Because these can see, are all crazy overhangs. Yeah. We have a beautiful cooling system on the print hat. So you can you can print like this cool overhangs. Yeah, well this I know that this isn't perfect. Yes. But it's good for what it's trying to do. Yes. And that's I think that's great that you're showing it off. Yes. And then you get to models like this or Deadpool here. Yeah. That's a great Deadpool. Thank you. Well where can people go to find out more about Zach's machines? So you can visit our website. So right now we are not available in the USA. We will be av available end of the next month. Okay. Uh, so you can get a much more uh, information on the, our website. And also you can send that email info at zax.com. Z-A-X-E. So, yes. Okay. Uh, they can send an email so we can uh, send them much more information. Oh, perfect. Yes. Well, Baki, thank you so much. I appreciate You're the welcome. time. Thank you. Have yourself a happy Maker Fair, and I won't steal that. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. We're here with Clovis and Foldy 3D at Maker Fair, and it's an interesting thing here. I, I see a video showing it folding down. So talk a little bit about this, because this is, this is incredible. Sure, no problem. The machine folds down from the two hinges on the left and right sides, um, all the way down uh, parallel to the base of the structure. Okay, and what's the purpose of this? Well, the purpose is to address the group of people, a growing group of people, who want or would have high mobility requirements and need to carry this on an airplane. This fits into a carry-on or something along those sizes. Oh it's, or, oh, it's for portability. Portability, exactly. Or even storage. If you're, I was just speaking to someone at a makerspace who wants to hang them up on the wall. So you just take it off the wall exactly. and you set it up and, okay. How repeatable is the process of the fold? Oh, it's very quick. You can do it in... 30 seconds, maybe a minute. But you can do it that fast 100 times, 200 times, 300 times, no sure, problem? No problem. What I noticed though, this is this is a completely custom machine, right? Yes. Because you have dual independent extruders. Yes. That's incredible as well. And to have it in a design that folds down, that's, does it work well? So this is our prototype version. Uh, <laughs> we're looking at rolling out a through a Kickstarter, uh, okay. our beta version in about three months. Um, but it does work well. Okay, I don't, um, see any, I don't see any print examples. We, we don't have any print examples with us. We are actually an international team uh, spread out between oh. China. Um, I'm graduating from McGill University up in Montreal in uh, a few weeks. Okay. And my uh, co-founder over here is uh, at Berkeley, UC Berkeley oh, right now. Oh, perfect, okay. Wow, so, okay, so a folding design for portability. It's a reliable design. Dual independent extruders. Yes. What's the build volume here? Um, so again, we're not really supposed to promise one just yet because we're still in the design phase, but uh, I would assume that anything that fits within a 10 by 10 by 10 okay. block, you should be able to fit into oh, this printer. Good. And then all metal hot ends, E3DV6, okay. or is it is it a custom hot end? Yes, yes, I believe <laughs> the, the, the hot okay. ends are custom. Okay. Yes. Um, looks like a standard just NEMA 17 in the back, right? Running. No, the... these are NEMA 23s. Oh, NEMA 23s? So, Whoa! All, everything, everything in here, they're all NEMA 23s, uh, well, much more, which allows are... us to reach the higher speeds uh, that we so are the promising. So the extruders, though, are, are, those look like, those are uh, a yes. little smaller, right? Are they they're small? The smaller? Okay, yes. It's okay, mm -hmm. it's okay. Uh, big belt driving Y, that's cool. The electronics, power supply, you've got the cooling fan there. This is an interesting machine. It looks like Foldy3D.com is where people can go to find out more information. Absolutely. And to keep up on it. Okay, real quick. What is the coolest thing other than folding that your machine has or can do? Ooh, uh, good question. Well, I think the coolest thing to us personally is that we, uh, uh, it is the, the real consideration when it comes to printers is that we're planning to sell this around for about $750 okay. a piece, which is significantly lower than you find with something with all these sort of features. Sure. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you look at, for example, uh, a Prusa kit will run yes. you $749, sure. and it's a single extruder, it exactly. doesn't fold down. So And the uh, frame isn't as strong. So you're, you already have a, a market and you have a target, yes. and that's... That's great to have. Uh, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thanks for letting me come back here. Again, this was Clovis, and this is Foldy 3D, and you go to Foldy3D.com for more information. Have a good Maker Fair. Thank you, you I too. I hope to see you successful next year. Absolutely. I am here at Maker Fair, obviously, and this is the Go Big 3D. Is that the name of the machine? The name of the machine is the Genesis 8 for eight cubic feet print volume. So eight cubic feet. Eight cubic feet. That is, so it's two, two, and two. <laughs> two, two, and two, okay. yeah. Wow, What? and you built this? I built that, yeah. That is crazy. Is this a, a kit that's available or is this just a, a self-project in your garage? 
It's not a kit, um, but I do sell them. But I sell them fully assembled because it has to be very uh, precisely put together. Although the shipping that must be a bear. Uh, it costs a few hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I take off the pedestal. Basically, it's that's only held on with uh, four screws, and I use those same four screws to screw it to a pallet, and then just build a crate around it, and then I can ship it anywhere oh, perfect. in the contiguous states. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So let's see, two feet by two feet by two feet. By 25 inches, yeah. By 25 inches. Uh, what are the, it's, it's using? Right now it's PLA, but it's I PLA. largely use FEDG. Okay. Yeah. And then but, is there an enclosure available or a, you can put a cover on it to I keep don't. it for ABS? Yeah, no, I don't. Um, just because that it's a heated bed, it's 1500 watts. <laughs> And that uh, was 1500 watts. 1500 watts. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So it gets pretty warm. So I, I, I don't do a lot of ABS, but as you can see with um, Pet G, it's got absolutely no problems with fine points wow. and overhangs, things like Can that. Can I hold this? Sure. That is crazy. It looks fantastic too. And I mean, those are. Those are sharp, sharp exact points. Yeah. points. Those are uh, not. And this was done in my garage wow. in the middle of December. Oh, so your garage was nice and toasty, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have a, a problem with heat, with, with that kind of a heating bed. Uh, looks like, so you've got a Bontech on there. Is that going to uh, an E3D or a Mosquito? Yes, a Volcano. Oh, a Volcano, okay. Yeah, but I'll probably switch over to the Hot Ends version of their high flow. Oh, yeah, okay. Just for the reliability, because it's made by the J-Head people, the yes. people who designed yeah. it. Yeah, and it, it just looks crazy, you know, secure. Their new one is pretty Their awesome. Their new one, yeah. yeah. In fact, I have one um, over here. So. Uh, oh, okay, that's right. Uh, I was going to work with them. I might I might get one of those in the show. Yeah. There's the new So the new, new one is going right to come there. with these on it. Wow. With the output the of that is going to be, oh, that's going to be crazy. Yeah, yeah. Very so, reliable then. Because something this big is going to, it can run for days. <laughs> Yes, right? it can. Uh, Lockheed actually has one of my machines, and their longest print was 88 hours so far. <laughs> so you, you don't want your print screwing up, you know. No, or 88 hours, or anything yeah. Like that. I mean, so, it gets to the end, you're like. Uh, yeah, so you want it to be as reliable as possible. So then if someone wanted more information about this machine, where would they go? They would go to my website, uh, gobig3d.com. Okay, and what's yeah. the retail price on this monster? $10,000. Okay, $10,000 gets you an amazing eight cubic feet of print volume right. with a new J head maybe. Right, maybe. that's <laughs> very reliable. And um, I can actually bring this to a show like this, you know, laying down in my van, bring it in and just start printing. I don't have to go through leveling the bed or anything like that. It's made to be very precise. Precise, so you don't have over to. time. Made over to be precise time. over time. And so even through movement and roughage and everything, it, you still don't have to level the bed. That's cool. Yeah. And Good to meet you. Thank okay, you so thank much. You. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. And uh, have a good make. Have a good rest of Maker Fair. All right. Thank you. We're here at the Prusa booth at Maker Fair 2019. This is insane right here. But let's talk first about this. The SL1. Are we okay. shipping yet? Yes, we are shipping for a week already. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. So everybody can expect that this week we will have a shipping table for all the orders. There is plenty of them, so it will, <laughs> take, That's good. It will take some time. Uh, I'm quite, I'm quite excited because everybody in the beta test was uh, very happy, and very I can't, happy. yes, I can't wait for people to actually show up uh, with the prints they made. I'm really excited because I saw a lot of the, the prints from people who had the beta units. Yes, they looked amazing. So now that it's shipping, we're going to have yes. 10x, 100x those yes. cool prints from yes. the SL1. Yes, yes, yes. I'm very excited to that many people will have it now, so we can improve the slicer even more based on the feedback. Oh, but yeah, you, perfect. Yes. Oh, we actually renamed the, the slicer. Two? Yes, yes, yes. So because is it slicer and not slick three R? Uh, yes. Well, <coughs> <laughs> so, <coughs> uh, but no, uh, because the, it was so different from the from the original slicer. Or slick, oh, I see. Or slick three R, and people were confusing it a lot. And still uh, open source? Yes, of course. Okay. Come on, come on. <laughs> but yeah, it's now it, uh, it's now released and it has the SLA support in it. So I'm, oh, perfect. I'm quite excited about that. Yeah, you need to try it because it's much, much, much better. I will try it. Yeah, I would say it's Simplify 3D Killer. Ooh. Or will it be in a couple months. Okay. So what's really cool, now that you're shipping the SL1 and you're going to have tables, people are going to be able to make the parts to maybe make something like this? Yes. So on this uh, Steampunk Mark 3S, all the details were printed on the SL1. This is incredible. So here's a little piece behind there. Yeah. And that looks 
crazy. So, so this is a neat trick. Some people use it because you cannot dim the screen if you are printing at night uh, and the screen bothers you. You can close it up. Oh, look at that. And now it's, not, and now it's a steam-powered printer, yeah. fully, fully through. Yeah. So talk about the changes here. I know some of this is decoration yeah. and print on the SL1, but is there anything here that's, that's functional that's been added to it? Uh, well, just this motor. Okay. No. Uh, <laughs> every, everything is cosmetic. So it is fully functional and we want it um, as it is a gift. Uh, we wanted it, if, if something breaks, it can be easily fixed. So it's using the standard parts. So it just, oh, it's just super nice. It is. So parts were printed and then yeah. patinaed or painted yeah, yeah. and that kind of thing. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and, the, okay. and this steam engine proved to be really reliable. Oh, yeah. that's, that's, and there will there be a blog write-up on this someday? Yes, yes. Uh, we, we quite didn't expect this uh, kind of uh, fuss about it. But as we see it, people are asking a lot for the STLs. So we'll put something together and maybe do a blog post in a couple of weeks okay. if, as an inspiration. That's great. Yeah, and we, we were talking about doing a competition for the best, oh. best pin cloud cursor. That's a great idea. Yeah. Well, this one, though, has a hole now, right? This is going to test it? Yes. OK. OK. Tomorrow. What will we see at the Prog Maker Fair coming up? Well, I, hopefully we will see you. Well, yes, yes. <laughs> we will be at the Prague Maker Fair. So will you. Yes. Is there anything planned that might be super special that we get to take a look at? Uh, well, it's hard to tell because everything is super special there. Aww. And you, you will be blown away by the venue itself. Because I can't it's, wait. It's a very old building and it's beautiful. I can't wait. We're going to be at Prague Maker Fair, thanks to Joe, and we're going to do a special tour of Prusa headquarters. So if you have any special requests of things you may want to see, questions you need answered, go ahead and leave those down in the comments. Yeah. It's always good maybe, to see maybe, you maybe, here. maybe we can do a Q&A so people can ask in the comments, and then you can ask me in maybe. Prague because it's just in three weeks, right? It's just, oh my gosh, it's three weeks away. Yeah. We've got no time. Yeah. Well, Bay Area Maker Fair is always special because it's where I got to meet you for the first time. It always feels good to see you here, Joe. I will uh, be blushing, man. I, I wish you nothing but continued success, and I hope you have yeah. a wonderful rest of Maker Fair. I love the, I love California, and I love Maker Fair here. It's one of my favorites after the Prague. <laughs> I'm here with Chris at the Thornton 3D booth, and they have a filament dryer. And what's interesting is I know you've probably heard about the fill dry You may have seen Chris's video on it or Walter's teardown. We're going to talk to Chris about why theirs might be a little bit different. Yes. Well, what? So you're drying filament in line. Correct. And is obviously this isn't going to take waterlogged nylon. Is that going to take that? That is what we're attempting to do. Wow. So okay. What we have is a few example pieces here. Mainly we have a carbon filled nylon, and the majority of all of these samples here have been stored. We had two 35 gallon drums that were stacked on top of one another so it made an enclosed environment. We then took oh. about one to two inches of water, elevated the spools within that environment and left them in there for close to a week. Okay. And this is a carbon filled nylon that we ran. So you can see the carbon hides a lot of the moisture. Yeah. But you can see just in the surface color and finish of the part that this one is substantially I guess milkier, if you want to call. Milkier would be the proper yes. term. Yeah, that's a great term and to describe this that. This one is a much deeper black hue. This as, looks proper. Yes. Whereas, and as well, the actual wall strength, physically, you can feel a difference in oh. there because the amount of moisture pockets that are inside the wet unit versus the dry unit is actually detectable just by your hand. Okay. So we've not done any actual resistance strength test with a pull or force gauge. We do have one, and we're going to be, you know, coming up with an Excel sheet for all of those numbers. Okay. But at the moment, just the visual is what we have. The visual is great, and yes. what everybody's really going to ask is, how does it work? Because they see, uh, yes. they see this, and they think it's two heat sinks and a heater block. Correct. And it doesn't look to be far from the truth. It is not far from the truth. But you have a, a machine, so it's not just this. There's, no, a, there's an not. entire machine. Yeah, so the reason beyond just being a hot end at this point is we went with most of those co components because they are readily available and is to keep the cost as low as possible for the end user. So what we've done is taken this block and removed the initial aluminum block that came with it. So we've machined these and added a much more accurate K-type thermocouple okay. for reading the temperature rather than the thermistor style that normally comes on an extruder end, which ah, is a resistor okay, style. Okay. 
So this is a actually a K-type we use in industrial application. So the measuring range is much tighter and much more accurate. Okay. Um, so it stays within half a degree of whatever temperature setting and whatever material you're running. Ah, uh, so okay. It, and we are using you know a standard resistance heater in here. And the other portion of this is the actual heating element is attached to the beginning part of this heat sink. So it's preheating as material comes closer and closer to this heated portion. Okay. And then the other side of this heat break is actually separated from the heater. So it allows for this portion to stay cooler. So as the material comes closer okay. to the cooler portion, there's a set of ports that have been put into the other end of this. Oh, right there. Yeah. Okay. So we've done a machining process where we go through, we'll cut a groove. Okay. And then that exposes then the internal so that the moisture has somewhere to go. Okay, so I mean obviously there's going to be detractors that say you can't get moisture out of filament that fast. I Correct. Mean, when I have a when I have a, a moist TPU, uh -huh. I will put it in a dehydrator at 160F for 10 hours, 12 yeah, hours. That's what we noticed. So how do you get past needing to do that? Well the main thing is Obviously, you want to be storing your filament in an airtight container to remove the introduction of right. dust and unnecessary moisture. Right. And most systems are going to be a passive drying system. Your desiccant beads, your silica gels, though, sure. so there's no heat being introduced. Right. So what we've done for most of our production parts that we run, we actually, yeah, we'll store them in a dry box or something to keep them at a relative humidity that when we do actually go to remove our part, and then we run a 16 hour run that during that 16 hour run, we don't absorb any extra moisture. And that's where the dryer gets in. Oh, oh, so the materials are the materials are being kept in a dry box and out of the dry box, they go into the dryer. Well, no, we are moving from the dry box and they're loaded directly into the machine how they are here. Oh, I see, I yeah, see, so okay. It, it's, the dryer in particular is being used during that entirety of your run. Okay. So yes, the more you, maybe at the beginning of your run, let's say a nylon that's been stored in a desiccant style box or a uh, dehumidified box, as soon as you remove it, you're instantly absorbing moisture. Right. So this was essentially created to remove any of those variables when we're running our production parts. It came from necessity. Okay. So what we've noticed now is all of these have been placed in extreme environments. Yes. So that's why we have not only extreme environments, but also the lower end of most of these filaments. So we have very Amazon basics, and as well we have higher grade materials, some 3DX, make oh, yeah. paper materials. So that one is probably our worst example <laughs> of the best result. So that one has been stored essentially in that wet box that we have, yeah. removed, ran through our Fusion 3 machine, and no dryer versus dryer. See, I, I know there are detractors and yes. people that say this won't work, but when you have examples like this, it's, 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 hard, it's hard to then continue the argument that it doesn't work because yeah. this is proof positive that it exactly. works. Uh, I'd love to try it sometime. We should work out getting this on the show. I'd oh love yeah, to, you know, of course, we'd love to see one out to you. Um, yeah, and another example piece is this one in particular. This is ASA, ran from the same roll. Okay. And one has a, this is the heated unit, and this is the non-dried unit. Now, if you look at it closely, you can see all of the moisture pockets that are actually, oh. each one of those is a little steam bubble. That's, That's right, okay. Because yeah. I was gonna say, surface finish is decent, but then you have the moisture, the, the bubbling yes. of the, 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 the water in the filament. Yes. And both of these have been ran with a .6 nozzle, and we're running anywhere from 60 to 80 millimeters per second. Oh, so we're not having to slow it down to go through the dryer, it's taking it at it speed. Is, it is at the point of use. Okay, this is super interesting. And it's, uh, I know that there's the fill and dry, but it's neat to have other options on the market. And yeah. uh, I really look forward to testing this. Yeah, and I'm really glad I got to, to run into you here at Maker Faire. Yeah, thank you very much. Have a good Maker Faire, man. Yeah, you too. We're here at Maker Faire at the Exo Slide. Exo Slide, yeah. Exo -slide Exo booth. Yeah. This is Giles. What exactly is an Exo Slide? It looks cool. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's like a modular linear slide uh, for uh, aluminum extrusion. Okay. Um, so you can put uh, as many as you want. So you can get like one, or you can put them together head to toe, and then you got a slide. Wait, wait a minute, you just pop yeah. them in? Uh, you pop them in, but you really you want to like clamp them down. So like here I've got, uh, I've like screwed them down here. Oh, you screwed them down, yeah. okay. Because that was pretty good, but th that is yeah. amazing smoothness. That's, yeah, the idea, yeah. 
and it, there's no wiggle whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. How did you develop these? Um, so I'm a mechanical engineer. I do see a patent pending. Yeah, there's a, unfortunately there's a patent pending. And uh, I, I developed them because I wanted to do a printer farm. Okay. Uh, I wanted to do like 10 printers, like large scale printers. Right. And uh, I don't like V-wheels. V-wheels have like a number of drawbacks. Um, most people can kind of relate. Yeah, it's kind of like my take on linear motion. It's really cool. Yeah, thanks. Uh, what I like is, it, it seems like a good solution. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can build anything with extrusion at this yeah. point, yeah. but how do you get motion along the linear lines without some sort of tolerance issue? Right. And you've taken care of it. Yep. Yeah, so the idea is it's, um, there's a little bit of preload in the, in the bearings. Okay. Or, or, or preload in the, uh, the plastic. And then you can also clamp them down if you want for more preload. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, so yep. you could, uh, so these are pretty free sliding. Yep. You can clamp them down and make it, yeah. give it a little bit of pressure yeah. or friction or. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Slow it down. Yep. Wow. Yep. So then you've got a machine here. Yep. Yep. You've got a machine here. Yep. And it looks like. And this is a Creality uh, Ender 5. Okay. And it's got an upgraded uh, motion system. Oh, your slides are right here? Yep. Okay. And these will be, uh, these oh, will be right here. laser cut. <laughs> They're 3D printed. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So then with, with a better motion system, yep. you're going to get more consistency in yes. the extrusion because yep. it's not going to have any sort of give. Yes. And it, it won't uh, wear as fast as well. So, yeah. How long will it take to wear? Uh, that's a good question. Um, longer, it'll take longer, longer than a longer. wheel. Yes. Yeah, okay. it, does, it doesn't grind, it, it just slides. Oh, yeah. That's so amazing. Yeah. So where would someone go if they wanted more information about these? Um, so my website, uh, exoslide.com. Exoslide.com. Yep. That's a good name for a website. <laughs> yeah, it's easy, easy okay. to remember. Yeah. And what, uh, what are people looking at for a cost? For um, so like it's this? $10. Uh, either one, uh, poly steel or polycarbonate. There's actually two types, uh, plain steel bearings or polycarbonate bearings. Oh, OK. Yep. Or polycarbonate treads. Um, yeah, so it's $10 a slide. That's not bad, especially yeah. if you want the ultimate in your 3D printer performance. Yeah. Or yeah. whatever you're doing. I mean, yeah. laser cutter, CNC machine. Yeah. You yeah. Can, well, you robotic, can now, robotics or yeah, whatever you, you want. You can now slide much yeah. easier. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, thank so. you for showing us. Yeah, this welcome. is amazing. Yeah, you're I wish you the best at Maker Faire. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, that was a lot of fun. We showed you six different awesome little booths here at Maker Faire, all having to do with 3D printing. That wasn't all there was to offer, and there was a ton more people and things to see, but that should have given you a glimpse of 3D printing here at Maker Faire. Don't forget, on Technically Nerdy, you can see a little wrap-up of a lot of the non-3D printing footage we've got. It's a lot of fun. I highly suggest you check it out. Don't forget to hug each other more. Love you all. As always, high five.